So let's get started. Here's the agenda of what we are planning to cover. <clears throat> the, a little bit just about us, uh, pat ourselves in the back a little bit there. Then we'll talk about why mobile product discovery is really, really important. We'll make a business case for that. And also explain to you why desktop experiences are not the same as mobile experiences. And I'm sure a lot of you know that. But we'll actually demonstrate why different, little slight differences actually matter. Then we'll walk you through some of the mobile discovery usability guidelines that we have uncovered and we've experienced and learned from. Finally, we'll give you some key takeaways and some questions. Okay. So a little bit about us. So Unbox uh, journey started three years ago, three and a half years ago now in, in site search. And we built just not a system, but an awesome discovery solution. What was so awesome about it was we had increased conversions for customers at about 25 and a minimum to about 300%. How? We solved problems that are unique to e-commerce and for individual businesses. It is highly customized for each retailer, even if you're a small specialty site. It's extremely easy to use and deploys just within two weeks. While no two solutions for us are the same, we still make it very, very affordable. We entered the US market last year in June and have already signed up about 250 plus e-tailers and are geared towards adding another 400 this year, and we're just in the fourth month of the year. This makes us the future site search leaders. Our customers span across different industries like apparel, mass, hardline, and grocery. And we've worked with customers where mobile traffic has actually reached over 70% on their e-commerce site. Our products have helped them increase conversions by 20% quarter over quarter, and this is the trend, and some of what we are going to share today has been validated in those markets. So that's what makes us mobile experts because we've worked with such customers. Uh, and some of the customers, just to give you an idea, are going to, by the end of this year, only going to support a mobile app or a site. They're not going to support a desktop site at all. And this is what we have learned from those customers, working with those customers as to how, with a mobile-only strategy, can you have about huge conversions and where 90%, 95% of your traffic is coming from mobile. So this is what we are going to share you, what we've learned by doing different things for those customers and seeing the conversions grow tremendously. So let's start with making a business case of what is it that customers do on mobile. How do customers discover products on mobile? We know, and this has been validated by a lot of industry experts, is that site search is the most preferred method of finding products on mobile. And navigation is used primarily for open-ended browsing where customers are either killing time or they're just trying to see something. The intent is not very strong for a buy, but site search, the intent is definitely very strong. So we believe that mobile product discovery is equal to search. Navigation is cumbersome. Search is the primary way to discover products, and we'll like actually demonstrate that. And there are two types of search uh, customers that we've seen. Some that are primary, and some that are explorers. What we mean by primary is they have very clear intent. They're going to type in exactly what they want. Could be a long tail query. Uh, could be a, a multi-keyword query. And they want to get, get straight to the product, buy it, and be done with it. There are explorers who are still exploring. They're not, they don't have high intent to buy, but they still are giving you a lot of signals by searching. And in both cases, if the relevancy is not strong, if the UI and the experience is not strong, there is a very high risk of abandonment. The next piece that we've also seen is recommendations also help customers discover products they didn't know they wanted. Okay. Now, why is this, again, important? There is a huge competitive advantage in mobile site search because only 7% of e-commerce companies consider it as a priority. Okay? So the faster you get there, the bigger edge you will have against your competitors. So why do customers on mobile prefer search? Let's actually prove that to you. We believe it's faster, clearly, helps get to results page quickly, and it's easy. It's a lot easier to get started with search than with navigation. And let's see that. Here's an example with H&M, very popular site. 
if I wanted to search for, if I wanted to go and find black jackets, I'm, I'm interested in finding good black jackets that I want to buy. If I were to choose navigation, I'll first click on this top nav bar, which will open up this menu. I'll click on men. Then if I, when I click on men, the third thing I'll have to click on is jackets and coats. Number four, I'll have to click on jackets and vests. Number five, I'm looking at some jackets, sure, but they're not those black jackets. Only maybe one that I see is black. I want to then only see black jackets. I'll click on a filter option up, the up at top, select black, and hit apply. Now I'm seeing some black jackets. It took me seven clicks to see black jackets using navigation. If I tried search, I could just type in black, and I've only started to type in jacket, and you can see the autocomplete is actually helping me get to black jackets pretty quickly. Now, this is not a, the greatest autocomplete, uh, because if I was at an H&M store, and I were to ask a salesperson, I'm looking for black jackets, imagine if the salesperson is asking me, are you looking for a black jacket or black jackets? Oh, and by the way, are you looking for a black jacket with leather sleeves? So not a great example of autocomplete, uh, but then we'll also show you some really good examples of how autocomplete should be designed to make the mobile search experience extremely well, extremely well designed. Okay, so how do we convert mobile discovery process into a shopping experience? All right, before we get into that, uh, we're going to launch a poll, uh, our first poll question. And please, if you don't mind taking a few minutes of your time to actually answer that. <clears throat> the poll question is, almost there. OK. What's Im more important to you on your mobile site, search or navigation? Now, obviously, we made some business case for <laughs> navigation not so being important. But if you're a small specialty site, you don't have a lot of categories, maybe navigation is important to you. We just want to know. So is search more important than navigation? Is search and navigation equally important? Or search is less important than navigation? All right. Let's share one big observation that we have seen before we get into the whole best practices and the guidelines. Our observation is that it's not that customers are unwilling to buy on mobile. A lot of uh, potential clients and clients, uh, when we, before we start working with them, they say that, you know, I, I don't have a lot of conversion on mobile. Why would I invest in mobile at this point? The idea is not that the customers are not converting on mobile. The question is, are they unable to convert on mobile? Because retailers that have solved some of the discovery problems and challenges that they face on mobile, have seen conversions go up. And that we have actually demonstrated that, and we've actually seen that with lots of customers. So we know that it's not the unwillingness to buy on mobile. It is just the unableness, inability to buy on mobile is what the big factor in inhibition is. OK, so let's start with the search piece. The first interaction with search is going to be your type ahead, your autocomplete, your auto suggest, whatever you might want to call it. It's your predictive search. At a baseline, you want to make sure that you have a very good predictive engine powering your autocomplete. However, how do you design the autocomplete also matters a lot. So here's one example of a guided autocomplete. We allow the customers to narrow down to a subcategory first as soon as they start typing some query in. This is what, the reason to do this is because you might imagine if you are a, if you're a big store, say Kohl's or Victoria's Secret, and you walk into the store, if you walk into a Kohl's store, you're not looking for t-shirts first. You're looking for the men's aisle first, probably. Or you're looking for the shirt aisle within the men's uh, section. So try to guide the customer and recreate that in-store experience online by creating a guided autocomplete. Now, if the customer is giving you more and more intent and giving you more keywords, you want to definitely identify that and predictively figure out what they might be searching for, which is where the technology piece really comes in. Okay. Recent searches. Now, mobile experiences get interrupted a lot. And because of that, 
the mobile experience restarts a lot of times. The fastest way and the best thing that we have seen as far as autocomplete goes is before the customer even starts to type in anything and they click on search, show them the recent searches. That is the fastest way to get them jump started back into the experience where they left off. And it's the, one of the most used uh, features in autocomplete. Okay. And it should be shown first right above as the first thing. And as soon as the customer starts typing in, another element we would also suggest is you start type you haven't started typing and you've just tapped onto the search piece, you can show recent searches or show some popular searches, but make sure that you actually create a slightly different UI to differentiate them. Label them or style these queries slightly differently. So you can see in this example, these are some of my recent searches. I also give the customer an option to cancel and stop tracking that. Just because I was just curious about it, it's not really something I'm anymore looking for. You can give them the option to cancel that out and then provide and give them this label to show the popular query slightly differently. And these suggestions, again, I want to repeat this, should be shown as soon as the customer taps onto the search bar and should disappear when they start typing. Okay, next is error tolerance within autocomplete. Now Amazon obviously and Google have made this very, very clear that this is where the future is. As soon as you start typing in on mobile, you are going to make spelling mistakes. When you do that, you want to make sure that you've auto-corrected these suggestions right there rather than waiting for the customer to do it on after the search is being done. Okay, so automatically correct spelling errors to prevent frustration at the next stage. Advanced spell check. Now the customer might still be able to misspell a lot of ways and the technology may not necessarily be uh, up to snuff to, auto to give you all the spell checks within the autocomplete. So if they hit search without correcting their spelling, when they are searching, the search results should also account for these errors. And it's not just one keyword spelling mistakes. If there are multiple keyword spelling mistakes, you want technology that actually understands all the keywords and auto-corrects all spelling mistakes. Okay. So here we're showing an example on Deborah Lipman where I made some key proximity errors on the keyboard, typed in nail color. You want to make sure, did you mean nail color, and then start showing some nail color. Okay. And these are the most common errors on mobile. A desktop site, but when you go to their mobile site, they don't have filters. Don't do that. That is not a good usability practice. The only thing they provide on the mobile site is sort options. That is extremely limiting, extremely frustrating to the customer, especially if they are a loyal customer of, you, of the Bowdoin brand. Okay. Now, every site does filter slightly differently. Everybody has some good designers. Every design designer will try to try to do the filter slightly differently. And then that's okay. You should be doing that. But guide the customer up front. Let them know how you have designed your filters. This is a very quick way of trying to give the customers a quick tour, a quick tool tip to say, here's where everything is laid out. Some people have filters at the top, view different view sections at the bottom. Just give them a quick tutorial, especially for your first time customers, so that they know how they can very quickly identify what options they have to filter down the results. Okay. Now that you've done that, what are some of the automated ways that we can actually guide the customer using technology even before they decide to use a filter? <clears throat> so let's say they start using search. They search for shoes, and the first thing the technology should notice is that, well, I have shoes, but I have lots of categories and subcategories of shoes. The intent is not very clear. So give the customers the ability and make it very, very visible, okay? To narrow down the intent. Well, you looked for shoes, that's awesome. I have plenty of shoes. Did you mean men's shoes, women's shoes, boy shoes, kids shoes? What is it that you're looking for? Help me understand what you want and guide them. It's not a race to show products up, up front. It's a race to guide the customers to the right set of products. Then I select women. Again, it's still not clear. Are you looking for bellies, boots? What are you looking for in women's shoes? 
So make sure that even when it's subcategories, that you provide the right set of subcategories. Now, here it happens to be shown in the alphabetical order, but it doesn't necessarily have to be alphabetical. You need technology that actually understands and identifies that when somebody is looking for women's shoes, your site is actually known for high heels, or your site is known for flats or sandals. If that's the case, you want to make sure that that is the first option that the customer sees, because that is the most popular option, and the customers are coming to see that on your site. Don't make them scroll all the way to the right, alphabetically sort sandals, uh, and select that. Show sandals up front if that's what your site is known for. And this is what the results should look like when I've now selected shoes, women, boots. So I can, in three clicks, very easily get guided to the right set of results. Okay. Here's another example for a category refinement. ASOS does this. They have a big banner on the home page. They say 70% sale. Well, what's included in the 70% sale? When I click on that, it gives me options to say, you know what, here's all the categories and subcategories that are available and that products are on sale in these categories. Guide your customers. Okay. Mobile refinement. Now, again, the idea is to make sure that the design should be as simple as possible. Don't hide options within options, and we'll give you an example of what that looks like. <clears throat> so here is a UI element and UI example of how you can design your filters to say department, sort, filter, everything right there next to each other, easy to find. And they're all visible right up front. Don't do this. Here's an example of somebody who is hiding the sort inside a filter option. Now, if I was looking to filter first, this might have worked. But if I was looking to sort first, this does not work. So since sort is not visible unless I go to the filter option because it's placed inside the filter menu, don't do that. OK, here's a UI element of how you can do multi-select for filters. Okay, It's a small screen, difficult to, difficult to, difficult to access uh, multi, uh, multiple filters. So it's very, very important that you provide the customers the ability to select, to do multi-select. And every time they select an option, don't refresh the site put an apply button at the bottom of the page so that the experience is more seamless. They have hit apply. They know they've actually finished selecting all the options they want to select. It's not just within the brand filter here. I might have gone into color. I might have gone into fabric and selected all the options that are important to me and then hit apply. Okay. All right. We are uh, launching our next poll, uh, if you guys would be kind enough to take it. The question we are asking here is, what is the biggest challenge that you guys are facing for mobile conversions? Do you feel that product discovery is the biggest challenge? Is it checkout? Or you're very much new into that arena where you still don't know? And uh, you're not looking at analytics, or you are looking at analytics, but you're still not sure as to what is the biggest challenge for mobile conversions? Okay. All right. <clears throat> so, the next set we want to get into is the results layout. I've done the refinements, and I've narrowed down the result set to a specific subset that I want to now start evaluating. One click product discovery is one of the biggest features that we have introduced that gives the customers a very, very quick and fast way to evaluate alternatives, especially on mobile. So what we do is the customer may not know why she likes these sunglasses, or there might be too many reasons why she likes the sunglasses. In either way, she's not going to be able to tell you that she likes them. So give her a quick alternative. You can put a button. You can put an image. You can put a link. The style and design is all dependent on how your site is designed. But you can click on it, opens up a modal window. You look at the alternative, scroll down. If you don't like it, you can close, and you can go back to the search results without interrupting your search experience. Offer multiple views. So here we are giving three options when you are actually looking at the results. Give, us, give them a list view if they are looking for a quick way to look at all the results. 
a grid view if they're slightly interested in their in its very small set subset of results, and a picture view or a block view if they just want to look at images. And this all depends on which vertical you are in. If you're in the apparel, fashion vertical, uh, this the block views are the, one of the most used uh, options. If you are more in the hard lines, the grocery, the list view is one of the most important ones that gets used. Okay. All right. Now let's talk about the actual relevancy. So I've looked at the search results. I've narrowed down the search results. Are the results actually relevant? And even before I apply filters and, and refinements, are the uh, re results relevant? Here's an example of TJ Maxx. I searched for an evening dress. The first two results that I get is shoes. And we know why this happens. It's because you can see that evening dress is in the title. And even though they are shoes, the customer's intent is pretty clear that they're looking for dresses meant for evening wear. And again, first couple of scrolls, you absolutely have to have most relevant results. <clears throat> Another example in terms of relevancy is color search. Now color searches are very, very common in the fashion e-commerce space and let's see here we have search for pink dress and while the results are dresses, they're not showing me the pink color. Now what is possible and we'll show you in, in, in the next slide is that these dresses are available in pink color. The problem is that they're not showing the pink image of that dress. Okay. And that is a problem. That is a variance problem where if that image, if that product is available in different colors and if the customer is searching for that color, show the right image of that dress. Okay. Now let's look at some of the recommendations piece. Now I've actually looked at the products. I've narrowed down the search results. I'm going into the product detail page and, and maybe on different parts of the site, how do recommendations actually guide the customer towards the, towards the conversion? Homepage. Now, a lot of prestige brands hesitate to put banners on the homepage. The key and I, the big idea is that, oh, I'm sorry, I did want to say there is another poll, I believe, that has been launched. Uh, not yet, in, in a second here, okay. <clears throat> so on the home page, why do you want to show recommendations? Because home page typically sees the most repeat visitors. And because of that, you know that these customers have had some experience on your site. They've shown some behavior on your site. Make sure that as soon as they come to the home page, you are guiding them to what might be really relevant to them, which is why recommendations on the home page that are personalized to that user are extremely important. And look at different user behavior, not just the past behavior that they might have had from six months ago or one month ago. They might actually be doing something an hour ago. You might want to make sure that you have the right kind of technology that looks at real-time, near, near real-time type of relevancy. Okay. And make it easy to access right on the home page. Okay. Not showing recommendations is not an option. So here's an example on a product page. On the desktop, Wildfang has recommendations. But on the mobile side, just because of the space limitation, they are not showing that. And that is not a good alternative. You have to provide good alternatives to the customer. Upselling on product pages. As you can see here, ASOS, when you're looking at a particular product, they're giving three different price points, 16, 42, and 14. You want to constantly give the customer an ability to see what might be better than what they're looking at. Just so that they are very, very confident that what they are looking at or what they are really interested in is, it may be cheaper, it might be, might, might be at a smaller price point, but showing them alternatives that are slightly more expensive, slightly better, always helps them narrow down and make the intent very, very clear that what is it that they are willing to buy, what is it they're willing to spend. Okay, so show relevant upsells, but also try to um, mix it in a little bit and try to push the customer to see alternatives. Okay, 
the shopping cart page, very important page where cart recommendations is the biggest untapped opportunity to increase average order value. If you're a small specialty site, you always want to find if the customers can buy two of the same. Uh, if I'm buying nail color and development, can I buy slightly different color, slightly different shade of that same nail color? How can I entice the customer to constantly increase my average order value? So can I cross sell or upsell? Either way, the idea is to always make sure you don't miss out an opportunity to increase the AOV. If you're selling very, very expensive products, sometimes clients hesitate to put anything to distract the customers. In, in those cases, the idea is that you want to cross sell something that is very complementary to what the customer might be buying. If, you, if a lot of times customers say that I don't want to distract the customer, the idea is not about distracting, it's about making sure that if you have seen a pattern, if I'm buying a $2,000 chandelier and I am going to need a rope to hang that chandelier, you better make sure that you show that to me on the card, on the card page. Because I, as a customer, am not going to think of that. And when the chandelier shows up and I realize, oh, the rope didn't come with it, I now have to go back to the site and buy it. Do, the, do a favor to your customer and show those cross-sell recommendations. Okay. New avenues. This is something we've seen uh, recently happening on mobile. You have lots of notification icons and stuff on mobile. Uh, take advantage of that. Uh, the alerts, notifications, um, uh, new item arrivals, all that stuff that a lot of brands and a lot of retailers are experimenting with, that's a very, very good place to also make showing, show personalized recommendations, okay? Now, here, should you be cross-selling? One of the big questions we get asked by apparel uh, retailers is, should you be cross-selling? Smaller brands uh, and smaller specialty retailers definitely have this big question because the idea is, I'm buying this top, should we be selling pants, should we be selling handbags that go with it? This complete the look element of it. It's extremely tricky. You do it ineffectively, it's going to be detrimental. And you can see here, I can on the desktop site, I see some cross-sell. When I go to the mobile site, how small that image looks. And that is very, very wrong. Do it right. Tell the customer up front, why are you suggesting that? You are saying, complete this look. This, we recommend that this, these two products go with this particular product. Help them understand why you are cross-selling and providing these other alternatives. Here's one great way that ASOS does it. You can see on the product detail page, a small button that says, by the look. You expand the window to show complementary products, which is on the right. If you don't like those complementary products, you just want to explore. If you don't like it, close it, and you'll go back to your product experience page. Okay. All right. I believe now we are going to launch our third poll. And the question is, what is your biggest challenge with mobile site search? Is it relevancy, autocomplete, spell check, or faceted search? Okay. What we want to now show you guys is we've shown a lot of best practices, a lot of elements that we've done, a lot of different things. What did we do for Debra Lipman? Okay. And how did we do it? And why did we do certain things a certain way? Clearly, Debra Lipman is a prestige, premium brand in the accessory space. They make unique colors and finishes of their nail colors and lip colors. And Debra Lipman is a go-to celebrity manicurist. And obviously, Fashion New York Fashion Week, editorial campaigns, fashion magazine covers, all celebrities cover the uh, all celebrities wear Deborah Lipman nail color. So very, very important prestige brand. What was really important for them was a good experience is reflective of what their brand stands for. So the challenges what we found was from a product discovery element on mobile was to improve usability and to increase conversions. Very two important ones. So what were the challenges we actually found when we drilled down to the whole technology element of it? So Deborah Lipman is on a platform called Magento. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you are not on Magento. You might be on Shopify. You might be on BigCommerce. You might be on Volusion, some custom platform, some high-end platforms like ATG, um, IBM WebSphere, 
Unbox Solution works on all these platforms and more. And let's focus on Debra Lipman as an example for Magento. The native Magento platform, like a lot of other platforms, has very ineffective site search, very poor relevancy. You have to design everything from the get-go. You have to design your autocomplete, but even in the autocomplete, relevancy might be very, very bad. Spell checking is extremely poor. There are no merchandising options, and if there are, they're all very, very manual, very cumbersome, and no personalized recommendations. You have to manually set the recommendations for each product, and if you have any more than 100, 200 products, suddenly this option cannot scale. And this is very, very true for a lot of other platforms as well, not just Magento. So what did we come up with to try to figure out what can we do on mobile for development? So the first thing we had to do, we knew, was mobile autocomplete to try to guide the customers very quickly to the products they might be looking for and also expose them to some of the high-trending products. Next was relevancy. We found that the customers on development usually had one or six types of queries. There's a total of 12 that Unbox has identified and six are the ones that we found relevant to development. So we solved all six types of queries. Mobile-friendly refinement options, advanced error tolerance, personalized recommendations, and drag-and-drop merchandising. These were the key things that we recognized were very, very important for development. Okay, so let's start with autocomplete. The, here's what the autocomplete on mobile looks like for development. As you can see, we are showing two elements, popular search suggestions, which are actually guiding. Because color and finish are extremely important to development, we want to make sure that as soon as a customer starts typing in something, we start showing color, black nail color, gray nail color, red, purple, yellow, multi, and finishes, creme, glitter, specialty, sheer, etc. Because that is extremely, extremely important for development, which differentiates them from hundreds of other sites that sell nail color. And at the bottom, you can see bestsellers. It's not just two. You can actually scroll and see six or seven bestsellers. And why that's important is the space development is the fashion trends change every season. So customers, when they're coming to the site, are absolutely there to look for what's trending. The faster we expose them to what's trending, the higher the conversion is what we've seen. And we've seen that the CTR for product thumbnails has actually increased two times that of standard query suggestions. Relevancy. Now, we've actually implemented a context-aware site search. So here, searching for a blue orchid, we want to make sure that we're showing the right product with the right color set of products. So drastic improvement in relevancy obviously supports six types of different queries. What is the first type? So one is color search. Development might have called their blue nail polish, say, blue orchid. But somebody might actually call it in and say, you know what, I'm looking for navy or teal. And if they have teal, we would show teal first. But then we know that teal and sky blue and ocean are in close proximity of a shade. We want to make sure that we show other alternatives to the customer that are in the same shade group. Even if that particular shade name is not in the catalog. So we have built an independent synonym corpus that actually understands what these shade proximities are and to show that. So if somebody's looking for a crimson dress and your catalog does not have a crimson dress but you have a red dress, we will find it and we'll make sure you will show red dresses. If you have crimson dress, we'll show crimson first. Okay. So here's what you actually can see. I looked at scarlet and you can see scarlet might not necessarily be what's used to define, but a close proximity to that, a darker red is what we are showing. Now, we also pre-select some of the appropriate filters. You can see what some of the close proximity colors might be. You obviously identified red as being the first one. Pink might be a little bit close to that, and after that, orange. Customers on development often search by product name. So they're, they've heard of this somewhere, either a friend or some fashion week, somewhere on a blog or somewhere, and they just take that name and search for it. As soon as they do the exact search, we make sure that we show that result, and not just that result, but something that is also in close proximity to that particular product. So an exact search type of query is solved. And again, why do we show those other nail colors too? So that's exactly the idea. We want to make sure that the customers see more alternatives, but are very, very closely relevant to what they're looking for. Okay. 
feature search. Here, the customer is looking for a particular feature, like glitter nail color. I want a nail color, but that has glitter in it. So we make sure that we are showing them glitter nail colors. Thematic search. Here, customers don't necessarily look for the product specifically. They are trying to provide a theme or a social norm as to how I might describe a particular product. So I've looked for spring, summer nail colors. And you can see we're showing the She Drives Me Crazy, which is the second nail color for spring, which was also one of the best nail polishes for summer 2014, which in, in a completely different site. <clears throat> now, relational search. So here, when a customer searches for something that actually crosses multiple categories or subcategories, we want to make sure that we actually show and guide the customer to that. So here's a relational search. They're searching for a designer nail color, and we're making sure we show all the categories for that particular designer. Symptom search. Not searching for a product, they're actually searching for a symptom or a problem or a, or a challenge that they have. I'm looking for cuticle care, not necessarily a particular development cuticle care oil. So if that's what they're looking for, how do we solve a symptom search by showing relevant results? Next, after that is, we've solved the search problem. Let's say we show a lot of results. Still relevant, but show a lot, a lot of results. And the customers want to use refinement. Refinements are a double-edged sword. You want to have them, but customers often find them frustrating. So how do you design them so they're not frustrating? Here, here's our interpretation of how we've designed them. Very fast, easy to use. Again, after you've used them, it's very easy to remove those filters if you wanted to. And an accordion style is there are very few facets. Okay. Now, as you can see here, the error tolerance on native magento was absolutely bad. And Mark Lipman, who's the president of Deborah Lipman, said to us that when with Magento, our customers encountered zero results for even the slightest errors, resulting in visitor dissatisfaction. And this is a native magento search. So here, what would we do to actually solve that? We explained this even earlier. Multi-queries, we've actually tested with almost six keywords being misspelled at the same time, and we've been able to autocorrect all six of them and show relevant results. So here is an example with just short keywords. Proximity errors, this is just one example. Customers make a lot of dramatic error mistakes, but typically are able to autocorrect them. Not with 100% accuracy. We are not that perfect. <laughs> Predictive recommendations. A self-learning algorithm to try to identify who this customer is, what their behavior is. With fashion brands especially, customers come in a lot of times and they evaluate a lot of alternatives before they decide to buy. So how do we make sure we constantly are keeping that customer engaged? We create a specific persona for that customer, try to identify are they price sensitive, are they color sensitive, are they finish sensitive within development? And based on what's really important, we constantly make sure we show right recommendations. Predictive recommendations, like similar products on the product page. I'm looking at a particular finish type of glitter finish type of product. We make sure that the recommendations are with that finish because that is so important to the development brand. Textually similar, complementary colors, and personalized for every customer. Okay. All right. Recommendations based on the shopping cart. If I have a particular product in the shopping cart, how are we going to take that opportunity to upsell? Again, we provide recommendations and promote with an impulse buy for those customers. Now, you design this awesome experience for your customers. You also want to design an awesome experience for your internal customers, which are your merchants and your marketing team. Give them the ability to provide, to make it very easy for them to do merchandising for either search, your navigation, your custom landing pages, et cetera, while keeping the relevancy intact. And we have a, a very user-friendly dashboard that provides that ability. Okay, so here let's look at this video real quick. You can see here we are organizing the keyword dresses. You can filter on all the attributes that are available in your catalog, or you can also promote products. And you can see how instantly the visual merchandising system will reflect back and say, okay, here's what the results you're going to see on the site if you apply these rules. 
if I promote and if I boost, I can boost high, medium, or low. Again, all the attributes that you have in your catalog are available. So if you're gonna boost by margin, if you're gonna boost by inventory, all of that is available because of that. As you can see, we boosted here with Adriana and quickly becomes an option. Now, if I wanted to take the ninth up product and put that at the top, because even after applying my rules, I still want to reorganize them. I've been able to do that by dragging, simply dragging and dropping, sorry, by simply dragging and dropping the products in place and pinning them. We also have the ability to, to give customers uh, the feature to create custom landing pages. So let's say you have discontinued a specific product, and development has that experience a lot. They constantly come up with new colors. So they discontinue, but there, you have done a lot of marketing out there, and when you discontinue a product, customers will still search for that product if they're still interested. And you don't want to show no results. You want to curate, create a specific custom landing page where you can show alternatives, newer colors of that same type, or some other suggestions. So we provide the ability to do that as well. Here's another option, they can do merchandising by color, a common tech, uh, tactic in brick and mortar stores. So why can't we do that online as well? So here's what we've done for Debra Lipman. Again, because it's so important to them. Debra Lipman sorts search and navigation results by color to give customers a very enhanced experience. So here through our dashboard, all they simply come in and say is I wanna promote, I wanna sort, pick color from the dropdown of attributes, sort by alphabetic, and there you go. Shows all the colors and merchandised by color. <clears throat> Curating the first scroll. Pinning high performance products to the first six to nine places in the search results and category pages. So here's again a very easy drag and drop way. If I wanted this fourth product to be the first product, I can just drag and drop, put it in the first place and pin it. And you know that how, no matter how people search for that, that product is always going to show up first. Okay. Curated landing pages. So here's what customer uh, what development has done. They've curated for the keyword Christmas. Uh, they don't have any Christmas specific products, but for Christmas they wanted to make sure they take shades of red and create a custom landing page. So here's what they've done. They've been able to use our backend merchandising dashboard and in five minutes, under five minutes, they've been able to create this landing page. Insights, that will be the next most important thing. What are the actionable insights? We also provide ability and access to reporting that provides top search queries, top of zero results queries, what the conversion funnel is for site search, what is the conversion for recommendations, for browse, et cetera. Now, one of the big questions we get asked is how long did it actually take to do all of this for development? So they gave us an approval on October 22nd, 2014, and we were live with our solution on November 17th, 2014, right before Thanksgiving. And it includes three phases typically, the discovery phase to understand what your business is, how do we help, the integration phase, and then testing and then going live. So what of all of this that we did had a business impact on development? Comparing year over year, we ignored November and December numbers. We just compared January, February, and March numbers to last year. Adjusting for traffic and all those increases, we were able to increase revenues by 28% for them online. We were able to increase conversion rate by 40% and the number of orders were increased by 45%. And we actually presented these numbers with Mark Lipman next to us at Fashion Digital in New York last month. So what are the key takeaways at the end of all of this? Mobile product discoveries it includes search, it includes navigation, and, and it includes recommendations. Desktop practices are not always meant for mobile. You have to think from a mobile strategy separately from desktop. Usa usability should be your primary concern. Shoppers are more likely to exit on mobile due to frustrating discovery process. But usability also comes with a very strong foundation in technology. If the technology is not good, your usability, no matter how awesome it is, is not going to be very good. And not every practice applies to your site. We shared a lot of best practices. It was across a lot of industries. So take it with a grain of salt, test, iterate, and repeat. Mobile experiences are still nascent and everybody's still figuring it out. And so absolutely should test, iterate, and repeat. Any questions? Uh, let's see. 
Okay, we have a few questions. All right, I know we are pushing the time limit here, so I'll quickly go over these uh, three or four questions that we have. And uh, on my desktop site, I cross-sell and upsell on product pages. Is it distracting if I use both on mobile? That's a great question. Uh, depends on how the UI element is, because in a lot of ways you design both cross-sell and upsell on product pages, it's a very quick way for you to identify when the customer is evaluating the alternatives. There is a possibility, there is a way from design perspective to show both. Uh, and, but again, depending on which vertical you are in, uh, on, in certain verticals it does not make sense, especially when you're selling a very high-end high expensive products. And um, so depending on which vertical you are in. Uh, the next question is, I like the merchandising dashboard. Can I get a resource that details what your tool can do? Yes, absolutely. We, if you have any questions of that sort where you want a demo of, your, of our product, absolutely, please don't hesitate to drop in an email, and we'll be more than happy to do so. Um, what are some of your KPIs I should consider to measure the effectiveness of my mobile discovery experience? So some of these standards, again, it varies by vertical. Uh, in the apparel world, um, people, customers do tend to do navigation a little bit more compared to in the desktop world. So in desktop, site search is quite a small number for apparel, but in the mobile world, site search is a very big number. In grocery vertical, for example, site search is extremely high. It's almost like 70, 75% traffic does site search. So it varies. But depending on what your vertical is, you want to look at and make sure that the revenue that site search is generating versus recommendations is generating versus navigation is generating is almost one third of each other. So site search should be generating about 30%, recommendations is 30, uh, 20 to 25, navigation is remaining an email, social media, and the rest of the stuff is doing the rest of that. Can you share some numbers on the ROI your clients have seen with Unbox? Um, let me quickly open a slightly different PowerPoint. Um, okay, let me just do that now. All right, so here uh, is what we've seen. I've just tried to divide this into three different layers. Uh, specialty site, medium retailer, and a large retailer. What one of our big differentiators we bring to the table is, say here, a, a typical site is 100,000 visits a month, five to 10,000 SKUs in catalog, 2% conversion rate, average order value is $50. We actually will guarantee an increase of $75,000 in revenue per year, or else you guys don't pay any money, okay? And we actually propose that the increase should be three times that, like $225,000 per year, but we actually, guarantee at least 75,000 or no payment is required. Same thing with medium. You have a million visits, we guarantee about 200,000 in additional revenue. We actually propose that you will see 600,000 increase and this is not, this is uh, sort of illustrative purposes. It will vary based on what your actual numbers up top here are, but we'll calculate that for you and give you a very specific guarantee number. And for large retailers, we also guarantee the numbers. Okay, let me just change. Okay, uh, we encourage all of you to please go and sign up for our mobile experience study. We will actually take a look at your current experience, uh, customer experience. We get a, a panel of 25 participants. We ask them, we give them three tasks, a very specific task to say, can you buy this product? A generic task to say, buy something in this category and a very hot, a high level task to say buy anything that you like on this site. We measure them on five different phases of product discovery and buying conversion journey, which is discovery, comparison, checkout, return stage, and alternatives. And we'll give their feedback and itemize those feedback and see if the, you have problems, if you don't have problems, what are you doing right, what are you not doing right. So please go and sign up on go.unbox.com slash MES. And thank you very much. Please don't hesitate to reach out. Send us an email. Here's my email address. Here's my phone number. I live here in Chicago and would take any opportunity to get out of the cold. All right. Uh, thank you, everyone. Thank you for joining us and talk to everyone soon.